Hi, I'm Jim with UltrasoundBoardReview.com. Today, I'm going to teach you how to determine right ventricular systolic function. Using echocardiography to determine right ventricular systolic function is a crucial determinant of long-term outcomes of adults and especially children with heart disease. The most common cause of right ventricular systolic function is due to left ventricular systolic dysfunction. There are three components to which how the right ventricle squeezes. The first is the longitudinal squeeze, and that is simply when the ventricles move in a longitudinal fashion, like this. This provides the majority of the RV global function. The second is the radial or transverse squeeze. The free wall here will move inward towards the interventricular septum. The third component is the interventricular septum moving transverse or radially inwards. There are a number of different ways an echocardiographer can determine right ventricular systolic dysfunction. Number one, the myocardial performance index or the MPI. Number two, fractional area change or the FAC. Number three, 3D echocardiography. Number four, strain. Number five, using TDI pulse wave on the lateral annulus. Number six, and finally, using tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion or TAPSI. Now, in order to determine right ventricular systolic function with echocardiography, you're going to want to obtain as many views as possible. You'll want to start with the personal long axis, in which you will see the anterior wall of the right ventricle here. Then, you'll obviously want to get the apical forward chamber. You'll also want to get a good view of the RA-RV inflow. In the short axis view, you're going to want to focus on the RV walls demonstrated here. This is at the aortic level, and you'll be able to see the wall here coming across here, and it connects to the pulmonary artery. Then, at the mitral level, you'll have another clear view of the right ventricle, and also at the papillary level. Then, also, you'll want to look at the subcostal view. And this is a great view, because anytime ultrasound strikes tissue at 90 degrees, we get the best imaging. So, as you can see here, as long as you can keep your uh, heart in a horizontal plane, you'll be able to see a really good view of the right ventricular free wall. Now, this next portion is very important. We're going to go over which arteries feed which segment. This portion of the right ventricle is fed by the acute marginal branch. As we move to the apical four chamber, this RV free wall is also fed by the acute marginal branch. When we come to the RA-RV inflow view, this portion is the inferior. This is fed by the posterior descending artery. The anterior portion is fed by the acute marginal branch. Now, when we come to the aortic level, this portion here is fed by the acute marginal branch. This portion is fed by the conus artery. In the subcostal view, this portion of the right ventricle is also fed by the acute marginal branch. Even before you do any measurement or any calculation of the RV systolic function, just take a good look in each view of how well each wall is squeezing. That way, when you get to the portion where you start measuring, you'll have a pretty good idea of what the function will be. Make sure you scroll to where the image shows end diastole or when the right ventricle is at its fullest. We're going to start with the fractional area change, and this is performed in the apical four-chamber view. You're going to want to plant your caliper right here in the corner and just start tracing along the tissue blood interface and you'll come down here cut across the tricuspid valve and then follow this tissue blood interface back to the top. Now we're going to measure at end systole and it'll be the same as before so you're going to plant your caliper right here in the corner and work your way down along the blood tissue interface, avoiding the trabeculations, 
and you'll come down here, cut across the tricuspid valve, and just follow your way up here. The normal value ranges for fraction area change is anything above 35%. So let's go over a sample problem, and I'll show you the equation you'll need to memorize for your echo boards. So your fractional area change is equal to your end diastolic area of the right ventricle minus the end systolic area of the right ventricle divided by your end diastolic area of your right ventricle. Of your right ventricle. So let's say for your end diastolic area you have 35. And your end systolic area is 30. You're going to take this and divide it by your end diastolic area. Once we get to this point, we're going to minus the two top numbers here. So 35 minus 30 is 5. And this will be over 35. When you divide these two, you're going to get 0.14. So the fractional area change for this equation is 0.14, which means the RV function is probably severely reduced. Now just to reiterate, this is the equation you're going to want to memorize for your boards. You will most likely be given three different options that are really close to this equation. One will probably have the exact same equation as this, and they'll add times 100. Do not pick that one. TAPSI is really easy when you want to determine RV function. Normal values for TAPSI is anything above 17 millimeters or 1.7 centimeters. In the four chamber view, you're going to hit M mode and place your cursor right along the lateral tricuspid annulus. Watch as the ventricle moves in a longitudinal fashion which will kind of look like this. You'll freeze it and then just place your cursor right here at the top and you'll have an imaginary line going each way like this and you'll just take your cursor, plant it right there and make a line right here to the bottom in which then it will give you a value in centimeters. Using TDI pulse wave is another simple way to determine RV systolic function. What you'll do is, once you turn on TDI, you will place your pulse wave right here on the lateral annulus of the tricuspid valve, and you're going to get a waveform that looks just like this, and you're going to measure the waveform above the baseline. This is the S prime. This will tell you the velocity of the longitudinal systolic function. Normal values for the S prime is anything above 9.5 centimeters per second. We have a master class that will go over in detail 3D echocardiography, spickle strain tracking, and myocardial performance index. Please visit ultrasoundboardofview.com for more details. And those are some of the ways you can determine RV systolic function with echocardiography. I'm Jim with ultrasoundboardofview.com. Thanks for watching.